In episode four, we turned our focus to rotid catchments. These systems are crucial for slowing down and directing water flow effectively. We'll break down how to construct rotid catchments and silt traps to work harmoniously to maximize water capture and minimize waste. So start off by just telling me a little bit about rotid catchments. What are they? Basically, they're uh, an area that's formed into slopes or like a W drain series of setups. They can be just a single lane graded out to a shallow sloping V with the overburden taken off and then the clay run over the surface of the overburden so as you're actually forming a, a fairly hard surface for any water that falls on it to collect in yeah. a V drain in the drain and then run to wherever you want to discharge it. Yeah. Generally in dams. But yeah, generally just as water catchment rather than trying to rely off paddocks for water runoff. How are you determining how long the catchments are? There's no hard and fast rule. It's um, just whatever area is available. And that's usually in an area that's not a high productivity or croppable area and to have enough ability to, or ability to get enough clay and line the surface of the drains. And are you usually taking the clay from what you've built out from the dam? No, it's out of the bottom of the drain itself. Yep. You're actually dug down into the ground. When you're talking about clay content, what sort of is the ratio, how are you working that out, and the depth of the Vs as well? There's a general, sort of like an area that we, if we can work in, we just work out which is the best way to form that, to get our slopes and we're chasing down enough to try and get, or chasing it down deep enough to try and get clay. And when you're making the roaded catchments, what are you looking for? What are the best things? Obviously the clay, how are you sort of scoping that out? Lots of discussion with the farmer and see what their needs are and then just working out a compromise. And best practice, things to do versus things not to do when creating a roaded catchment? As long as they can keep that surface fairly uniform with the clay surface on. Sometimes sheep will get in them and dig holes, but it just needs, you know, maintenance on them again. And when you're talking about saline water management, what's best practice there? If you've got a saline problem where the W drain is, usually the dam's buggered by that stage anyway. But we have been able to reclaim dams and shift salt water away with the drainage systems. Yep and then go higher up the slope away from any salty country and claim fresh water from up there and yep. put that into the dams. We always put a, in that situation, put a scow pipe in the bottoms of the dams so that once it gets up to uh, almost full level, it'll scour the water off the bottom of the dam and reduce the uh, salt content in the dam. I want to talk a little bit about the silt traps. Uh, you obviously have developed these, but how do these sit above the rotor catchments? Can you tell a bit about how these work together? Silt traps are generally in the mouth of the dam and we set those up mainly to keep out in storm situations, your, you know, sort of whatever floats on storm water, grass and sheep shit and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. We'll float on a blanket on top of the water, generally for three, four, five hours. Setting the silt traps up, we just put uh, an inverted pipe that draws from under that blanket and a sump under that that'll, you know, collect the heavies and the water is drawn between the two. So you're ending up with the best of the water that's there. Want to talk a little bit about contour banks instead of rotted catchments. Can you tell me a little bit about what a contour bank is? It's a bank that goes across the contour of the country and rising, at, it's surveyed and it's rising away from the end point where you want the water discharged. Uh, basically to catch whatever's running down hill slopes, bring it back to a, a release point, which would be generally above your dam or your silt trap. Do they work better? Is one better than the other? Or is it just sort of the paddock situation? It's really the type of country and the paddock situation. It really depends on the, the rainfall you're getting as well yep. to how well each one works. Is that something that you also include in conversation with the grower when you're talking to them or the farmer about what they have in terms of rainfall so that you can scope out the paddock better? Oh, certainly. Yeah. Yeah. 
they know the country, they live on it, work it, so yeah. they know what the country is actually producing water-wise. Yeah. yeah. Is this also something where you're looking at the material of what the soil profile is? So you're looking at if it's clayed enough or, you know, what its surface soil is? Contours are usually constructed with the grader, but we sort of try and do those as sort of like a semi-roaded catchment as well. Yep. And so you can easily drive through them with vehicles and stuff. Yeah. And the bank pushed out and then put clay on those as well. So they're acting sort of as a rotor catchment as well. When we're talking about contour banks maintenance, what are the tips here? It's pretty much the same as rotor catchment. Yeah, if they can spray them and yeah, just have a look at them, see if they're accumulating material in them over time. Yep. And yeah, just do your, a regrade maintenance. Thank you for tuning into the Water Smart Dams podcast. We hope you enjoyed today's episode and it gave you valuable insight into the effective water management practices that you can implement on your farm. This project is jointly funded through the Australian Government's Future Drought Fund and the Western Australian State Government's Agricultural Climate Resilience Fund.